Greetings, welcome to Lunar Burn Studios. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to patch and fix your cracked and broken ceramic shell. In this video, we're going to talk about how to fix ceramic shell. Ceramic shell can crack during burnouts. Um, I mean, ultimately, if all goes right, your, your shells aren't gonna crack, and you're gonna be, you pull them out of the kiln, you inspect them, you're good to go, and you're ready to pour metal back into them. But for a variety of reasons, you can wind up with cracks in your shell. And whether that's gating, not enough heat, you know, whatever the situation is, but ultimately that wax expands as it, as it goes molten. And if you can't get it out of the mold fast enough, it's gonna expand, it's gonna crack your shells. So what we wanna talk about is, <laughs> once you've realized that you have a cracked shell, how do you fix it? Now, realistically, there are a variety of methods and approaches we can take. The three that I'm gonna talk about this evening are going to be uh, using slurry, the slurry that you already dipped your ceramic shell with, um, but there are also a, a variety of refractory mortars and cements that you can use. Everything has their kind of pros and cons uh, to them, and we'll talk about those as, as well as we get into this video. One of the key things when you're burning out your shells is that you wanna make sure that you get them burned out well enough that they're a pristine white, a bone white. Okay, so one of the things I like to do as I'm inspecting my shells is that, you know, sometimes the cracks are, are super noticeable. Other times, like in here, it's just a super fine kind of hairline crack. So typically what I like to do is go in with a Sharpie and circle the crack. I don't want to necessarily, I usually just go ahead and, you know, give myself about a three quarter inch or a couple centimeter, you know, kind of profile around where the crack is. And this is where I'm gonna focus my patch on. Regardless of the patching material, I don't wanna just, you know, just go just a little bit over the crack. I wanna go ahead and get, cover a good swath on it on the off chance it's gonna to wanna to open up anymore uh, during the pour and dealing with the head pressure and the pr or the pressures of the metal um, as it's being poured. So for a typical crack, I usually wind up with, you know, I guess, uh, probably three or four centimeters wide, or about an inch, inch and a half, or, or along the, you know, either side of the crack. This crack's a little bit more noticeable, but it's still handy to just kind of, really kind of get a sense of like right here in the middle, it's super noticeable. But as it feathers out more towards the end of it, it becomes a little bit more subtle. And it doesn't look like it quite goes up into the, into the socket there, but. And the same thing with back here. I mean, it gets pretty tight in here. It looks like kind of feathers out back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this around. And then that way, when I'm patching a bunch of shells, I don't have to go back in and reinvest, you know, re-inspect the shell to try to, you know, kind of suss out where the crack is. I wanna be able to, you know, once I, get in mode with the bright lights and identify all the cracks, then I can go back in and start my patching. In this crack, there's actually still a little bit of carbon in it. So it actually does make it you know, real easy to see, but again, it kind of feathers out and it gets a little bit tighter. So regardless, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and draw around it. And I'm gonna come up about an inch above where I think the crack looks like it ends. And actually this crack, because of the carbon, like if it wasn't the carbon here and some of that, I wouldn't even be able to really see it. So one of the first methods we're gonna you know, talk about for fixing your ceramic shells is just using the slurry that you used for your original shell. So one of the things I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna use fiberglass for this. I cut my fiberglass up into about two by two inch chunks. And even this is, is still a fairly dense weave. You know, I don't really, you know, we have the regular, you know, heavy cloth. And there, there are moments where this is a, actually a good material for fixing some breaks in your shell. Um, but we'll talk about that later, uh, probably in another video. But for this situation, I really like the chop glass. And obviously, when, once you cut up out of the mat, like I said, it's still a fairly tight weave. 
But really, you know, what I like to do is actually kind of pull it apart, kind of tease it out, because I want the slurry to really kind of penetrate the fibers and encase them. If you don't do this, and you wind up, you know, just having slurry, fiberglass, and then slurry on the outside, um, they, can, they can have a tendency of delaminating, and that's actually why I don't like using the other cloth. So, but by kind of just teasing this out, kind of open up the fibers. And so you can either soak this into your, into your slurry and just make a whole batch of, of, of investment slurry, or you can just go ahead and apply it with a brush what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply, gonna brush this on. We're gonna go ahead and cover the whole surface surrounding. And again, you can see where using the Sharpie is real helpful in this situation, so you don't lose track of where your crack actually is. And then, go ahead and apply the fiberglass. And this is why I tease it out. If I did, it wouldn't really permeate the fibers if I didn't open up that space. Now there are some fiberglass weaves are super open. And if you can find those, great. And you really want to make sure you get, you don't want to, you know, the, you don't want the slurry to be super thick, but you do want to work it in so it's on the, full, all the way around the fibers. Now, realistically, with this amount of slurry and with the fiberglass, that's going to give us a pretty decent, you know, layer of patch. Um, but we do want to create a, just a little bit of extra strength around this. So what I'm going to do is just taking a little bit of my coarse stucco. I'm just going to lightly dust the area, kind of like looking like sugar. But, and the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to do a couple more layers. And so this stucco is going to add, give my patch just a little extra strength. Now, the, the strongest patch is going to be one that you just let air dry or put a fan on it. And so it'll take a similar dry time as it did when you were actually originally dipping the shells. You can take a torch to them to, to kind of accelerate it, but you don't want to, you know, I would go in, if, if anything, maybe a, a heat gun as opposed to a torch. So it's been about an hour now coat of slurry in combination with the fiberglass and the coarse stucco is dry. I don't have as much color indicator as some of the, like the Just Dip and the Remet, the suspended slurry and whatnot, which would be a little bit brighter yellow, but this is indeed dry. Now what I want to do is trap the fiberglass a little bit more. So we're going to go in and do an additional coat of the slurry. And again, it doesn't need to be real thick, but some of that will just depend on the consistency of your slurry and how thick you're running it. As you remember from my previous videos, I actually run my slurry pretty thin comparatively to some of the pre-packaged slurries. And I do that because I'm not in my studio every day. I need to, I like to basically dip my shells in and have them dry as quickly as possible. And I can get away with that a little bit better with the thinner slurries. With that said though, if you're buying a, a pre-mixed slurry 
then you should run it at the specs that they suggest. Now with the slurry, I like using, putting it in front of a fan, just letting it dry the normal way, or putting it maybe using a heat gun. You can use a propane torch. For the most part, it works pretty well, but it, it doesn't make the perfect patch. I have had situations where I've tried to accelerate the slurry too much, and I wind up still having a leak. So, but if you are gonna use a propane torch, go ahead and use a circular motion to cover as much of that surface as possible, as evenly as possible. And so what I would do is, you know, move around the surface like I just did, and then I'm gonna let the, you know, the ambient temperature actually finish, you know, driving off that moisture. And we can already see where the, the green is starting to dissipate and the yellows are starting to come back out from the color indicator. But instead of just keep blasting it with the torch, I'm gonna, I, I still want there to be some you know, kind of natural uh, evaporation of the moisture, of the water um, in, in the material, um, and I don't wanna overcook it. So what I'll do is I'll let the, this cool down and then maybe you know, apply the torch once or twice more, and then I can do the final seal coat. So now that our shell has had a chance to rest, we finally have some decent yellow color in here. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the final coat of just slurry only. And just like when we seal our shells, the reason I wanna do slurry only is that right now, as I move around the surface, I'm, you know, a lot of that silicon can just release. It makes a mess. Um, and ideally you wanna keep everything as you know, tight and clean as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a final coat of slurry. And you can see a little bit of steam coming off here from the ambient heat that was already on the force curing the previous patch. So using the slurry in combination with fiberglass and uh, the coarse stucco is a nice solution for fixing your ceramic shell. Usually definitely for the cracking, but you can also fix more broken, larger broken shells that way as well by doing you know, a small section, getting it to set up, and then do the next, next part and the next part as you work your way, depending on how severe your breakage is of your ceramic shell. That'll do it for the first part of how to fix your shells, in particular with just the slurry. In the next video, I'm going to talk about mortars and cements. If there are other techniques that um, I'm missing or approaches with this slurry, let me know in the comments. And as always, until the next video, be creative and be safe. Mm -hmm.